Well, good morning, Avion Awesome subscribers. Welcome back to yet another riveting episode here on the Avion Awesome channel. Um, today, I've got a project for myself, and it involves electricity. So I'm going to be taking my multimeter, and I'm going to be testing the battery voltage here in just a second. And I think that my converter is bad. This is the new one. The old one is underneath this bench seat. So I'm going to be pulling this up trying to test it i don't really know how you would test a converter i mean if the electricity is going through i don't know but uh all i know is that the house battery out front is not getting charged so i'm going to swap the old one out with the brand spanking new one and then test the voltage throughout the day on the outside battery and see if it actually is beginning to charge so what i have been doing up to this point is basically i've just been running an extension cable from my solar system and just recharging the battery that way. I mean, it was a free way. So if it does happen to start charging with the new converter, I may leave it. But I mean, to me, it's almost just as easy to just run the cable or run the extension cord, hook up the uh, trickle charger to the house battery and charge it up that way. But honestly, if I can get it done without having to do a bunch of other stuff, you know, running the extension cable, it is kind of just a little bit of a hassle and I'll try and get it done that way. But if not, then yes, the converter in most situations is gonna be way easier. So this is the one that I grabbed. It's called the Power Max. Uh, it's the PM355LK. Yep, it's a 55 amp converter. So, I mean, that's gonna draw quite a bit of power. And in theory, it's even gonna be better than uh, the one that I have. The, uh, the This one in here is like almost 42 years old. It's an old Progressive Dynamics uh, 40 amp converter. And this is a 55, so I should be able to get my battery topped off much, much faster, much quicker. And if it's gonna be using the solar system anyway, uh, when I'm boondocking, I would rather just go boom, recharge, get it up to spec, and then it should just trickle charge it, which should in theory not drain near the amount of power uh, off the solar system on the roof uh, as it has been. Because when I'm boondocking now, with only the refrigerator and only the converter running, I mean, it is draining the living crap out of my solar system fast. And as you can see here, I've got a lot of corrosion on that uh, on that negative lead. I really, I need to cut this wire. I need to put a new uh, ring on there. Uh, this one obviously is doing fine, but uh, let's see what the uh, state of charge is currently. Okay, we're sitting at about 12.18. That's pretty damn low. And the charger, the old one, the old Progressive Dynamics that's underneath my bench seat down here, it's plugged up. I mean, it's it's working right now. Well, it's not working, but it's plugged up and connected to all the appropriate wires. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, um, the state of charge on a lead acid battery, 12.1 roughly is basically empty for that battery. Uh, you wanna maintain a lead acid battery somewhere between like 12.6, 12.7, maybe all the way up to maybe 13.4 somewhere in that range. Uh, some of the lead acid batteries uh, can go all the way up to into the 14 volt range. Uh, but the thing with these converters is that what they do is they essentially will take the AC power. When you're plugged up to shore power, it converts instead of inverting, you know, because with a lot of solar systems, the solar systems bring in DC power and then you have to invert that power into AC power. Well, this does the exact opposite. But as you can see, my house battery was at 12.1, so that battery is essentially empty. For the last four months, the converter has not been recharging the house battery. Realistically, the only thing that I use the con uh, converter for is to power my power jack outside and to complete the 12 volt circuit for all of my internal lights. Everything else, if I'm running something off AC, everything works just fine. But as far as like the 12 volt lights, here on the ceiling. My little reading lamps here in the front, they won't work. Uh, the stove light won't work. But essentially what I end up having to do is that if I try and just unplug the converter so that it doesn't drain my solar system, um, I end up having to use my battery powered lights. And I love these lights. I'll talk about these lights uh, in another video, but uh, they're just magnetic. They just clip right up there and then I use them at night when I'm boondocking and then during the day, I just plug them up to my solar system, recharge them, bingo, bango, bongo. 
Okay, so the first thing I gotta do is I have to disconnect the positive lead on the battery. So I'm gonna disconnect this lead. And then after that, I'm just gonna disconnect the entire camper. That way I'm not getting any feedback or, or, or electricity feeding through the converter. All right, now that that's done, I'm just gonna go around here and I'm just gonna hit the breaker for the entire camper, shut everything off. All right, now that everything is shut completely off, there's no power coming from the battery, there's no power coming from the pedestal. Now I can go ahead and start uh, disconnecting the wires on the converter and then start installing the new one and see if that was actually my problem. All right, cushions off. Let's raise the seat panel up. There's the converter. It's pretty daggone big too. It's pretty big, it's pretty tall. So I'm just gonna unhook everything and uh, see what we got here. Wow, will you look at the size of this thing? This thing's huge, like there's my hand. Like this thing is so tall. It's a uh, old units and old progressive dynamics model PD708. There's no actual like uh, plus or minus sign here on the wires. So I'm pretty sure this is my ground, obviously. It's big copper wire. So we got the red. It says red right here, red and blue. But the red's in the blue, and the blue's in the red, where it's marked. So that didn't really make any sense. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna have to do is I'll just have to, maybe I'll just leave it grounded for now, pull these two wires out, uh, plug the unit back in, probably use my multimeter to kind of figure out which one actually is creating some power. Realistically, both of these are probably delivering power. If this is the ground, one is probably delivering power out to the, um, to the power jack and this one is probably delivering power to the the uh, 12 volt fuse panel that's what i'm guessing anyway no i'm second i'm second guessing that now because it looks like the red and the blue are both connected up here to this old fuse panel as well and that is my ground bus bar and the red or the blue neither one of them are there so those are probably both hot the problem is so if i've got two hot wires am i going to have to try and squeeze both of them into this into this positive terminal here because I've only got two whereas on here what the hell okay so the old one has like a bunch of screw holes so what I've decided to do is pull this this top side panel off and just kind of see what I can see in there because I can't pull the wires loose these don't feel like they actually untwist or anything so these may just be like cable uh, relief Oh, wow. Tell you what, with an RV, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. All right, so I'm just gonna be honest. I don't know what the hell is going on. So this doesn't even let me see. So there's no, there's no way for me to see inside this panel. So this is my fuse, obviously, but yeah, like I can't actually see where these wires are going and I don't really see how to unhook them. Okay, good. So this actually has a front panel that I can just take off. The red comes up into here and then gets capped off. And then the red goes on in and then the blue goes to a white one. So a red to a red and then a red to a white. So what the hell? Well, thank goodness for the internet. It doesn't make it much clearer. These old schematics are pretty bad, but it says here that the red and the white wire complete the circuit to the battery and that the blue wire is the auxiliary circuits that go to like your lights and your uh, 12 volt DC fans. So it looks like both of them are hot and then the, the copper wire, I suppose, and the black wire are gonna be the, uh, the ground. I guess I'm just gonna try and trust this and hook up the red wire to the positive. And I guess I'm gonna have to hook up the blue wire to the positive as well. And then hook up the brown or the black and the copper wire and use that as my negative or my ground. Oh man, I hope I don't mess this up. All right. Okay, let's talk about this. Something has clearly happened. I got the new converter all hooked up. At least I think I got it hooked up the correct way, but it still was not charging the battery. I've been messing with this thing for like six, six and a half hours now. I'm just done. 
So I just completed the circuit for my 12 volt lights uh, by putting the two wires together. I'm just not even gonna, I'm not even gonna have that extra component. Not when I've already got solar and I've got a battery management system already in the Energy Kodiak. So I may not go that route. I may just get like one of those uh, solar trickle chargers and call it good. Like I said, the only thing that I use the house battery for anymore is to uh, use the power jack on the front of the trailer. That's it. That's the only thing I use it for. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't even need a house battery. Technically, I guess I don't. I could run a power wire directly from my Energy Kodiak. Like I'm running everything from that entire battery system back there. So I'm just gonna send the brand new converter back, just call it good. I've already replaced the vast majority of my 12 volt lights in here anyway. I mean, there's almost no reason to even own a converter at this point. When you go solar, there's just not, like all, damn near all of my lights are battery powered anyway. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna skip it. I'm gonna give up on it, don't care about it, done, finito. So. At this point, I've just got everything cleared out. I'm already having, you know, to clean all this crap up. I mean, it's just been a complete and total nightmare. So I'm just gonna send the converter back. I've already got it unhooked. It's going back immediately. And for probably less than half the price, instead of using a converter charger, I mean, I can just use a, a solar trickle charger if I, need, if I needed to. I mean, even if I don't put it in the, the sun, I could probably take one of those 50 watt panels and use that and keep the, the few remaining 12 volt lights that I have running off the battery in here. I could use that to run those indefinitely forever and ever and ever. So I'm done. Sorry I wasted your all's time. Uh, yeah, when you go solar or when you realize that solar is uh, the ultimate option at this point so that you don't have to worry about all this, if you ever get into the, if you ever get to the point where you're like, you know what, I should just build my own. You really should. And you will not have to run it nearly as many wires as before because you're not going to need nearly as many wires as before. Just like with these lights here, they're completely uh, wireless. They're battery powered via, it's got a built-in lithium battery. I just hit the, batter, uh, the button over there, my light comes on. Like I said, if anyone wants to know about those lights, y'all just let me know. I'll make another video on that. Thanks so much for watching yet another riveting episode here on the Avion Awesome channel. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I'm going to see you guys again on the next one. Peace.